and welcome to Hope Community Church. Um, my name's Heather and this is my son, Jack. Thank you. We would particularly like to give you a warm welcome if this is your first time joining us. And we'd like to give you a few details of what to expect this morning. Our worship today will be by our amazing worship, Hope Church worship band. Uh, we'll have a small talk by Nick. And today's word will be from Amy, who will be talking on not being worried or anxious from the passage from Matthew 6. This week, um, I've been reading through um, the book of Mark, and there's some stories in the Bible that you read, and you know, you think you know really, really well, and then all of a sudden you read it again, and God speaks to you about something. So I just wanted to share a little bit about that. Um, and it's from Mark chapter 11, and it's when Jesus went into the temple, and it starts with, it was in Mark chapter 11, verse 11, and it says, Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around and everything, uh, everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethlehem with, but to, sorry, not to Bethlehem, to Bethany with the 12. It then goes on to say that it was the following day that he actually, it says, on reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. And he would not allow anyone to buy merchandise. When I first, when I thought I knew that story, to me, it just seemed that that was like a knee-jerk reaction from Jesus, that he'd gone into the temple that was his father's house and he'd got so angry but actually, he'd been there the night before. And it just made me think how we react sometimes to a situation. We react in anger, and it's like a knee-jerk reaction that we react. And actually, what did Jesus do? He stopped. He looked around. He surveyed the situation. He looked at what was going on. And, you know, he looked at the whole picture. And, yeah, it just really made me think about how we act. And I was thinking about, like, the green cross crowd, the stop, look, listen. And I thought, Do you know what? If we did that a little bit more, we stopped, we looked, and then we listened to what God was saying and then responded rather than reacted. It could be a whole lot of a different situation of how we do. We so often regret the words we say in anger. And that just really spoke to me. So I hope it will speak to you, and I hope it will make you think next time you probably feel a bit angry about a situation, which at the minute I think that's quite easy for us to do, uh, you know, with not being able to do things and not being able to see people, and we can react so angrily. So I hope that will speak to you as well. Um, I'm just going to pray for us now for this morning, and um, then it will be, I'll hand back over to Jack. Okay. Um, so, Father, Lord, I just thank you that you are in control, that you are a God that is over all this situation that we're going through. You know exactly what each one of us need and what we're going through. And I just pray that during this time, rather than look out in anger, that we'd look up to you, Father, that you would just help us to give us that peace in situations, Lord. So um, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for all the technology. And um, yeah, I just thank you, that, Lord. Um, you're going to speak to us this morning through both Nick and through Amy and through the worship, Lord. Um, so we just look at you this morning, Lord, in your name. Amen. Please feel free to comment on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, and if you'd like to get in touch with us or know more about us, then please email us at admin at hopechurchwigston.co.uk. We hope you enjoy the service. Thanks, Jack and Heather. Um, I love it when God brings new perspectives that we hadn't considered before. So thank you, Heather, for bringing that uh, word at the beginning of the service. And we're going to continue to look up to God now as we bring our worship to him. One of the ways that we can be less anxious is knowing our firm foundation in him. And we're going to sing about that first, singing yesterday, today and forever. So if you're able to, why don't you stand where you are um, to sing out your worship to our great God. You are the only 
above everything you are awesome God everlasting God high and above every power we lift up our worship to you today we thank you Jesus that you didn't stay in heaven but that you came to earth gave yourself for us. Wow. 
Jesus, that you are there holding us in your arms of love. An everlasting God, in the Old Testament, you said underneath are the everlasting arms as well. And we just thank you, Lord, that you have always been for us and always been there supporting us and being there for us. And we just give you our love and our gratitude, thanks and praise this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Over to Nick. Well, good morning, children, young and old big and small, I get the pleasure of doing the small talk this morning. Well, I don't know what you've all been doing through this half term, but for us in the Eason household, one of our favourite things this week has been going to Hardwick Hall and, and, and walking through the gardens and through the trees and through the forests. And it's extra special at this time of year, isn't it? In this season of autumn, um, we've got all the leaves that have fallen on the floor. We can, we can run and we can walk and we can kick the leaves, can't we? We can, we can pick them up and we can throw them in the air. And we can even dance and, and, and be like leaves, can't we? We can pretend to be leaves. And I know Paul Gask really loves to be one of those. Um, but one of the amazing things as well is, that, is the colours, isn't it? You know, the, the colours are just absolutely fantastic. And I've just brought a few just to show us uh, these leaves today and display their colours. So bear with me all. So we, we've got ones that are like a, a bronzy kind of goldy colour, haven't we? And it's kind of cool. And they're a bit dried out because I picked them in the week. But uh, you can still see the colour of that one, can't you? And then we've got different ones. We've got that one, which is a bit more kind of like yellowy and a bit, and a bit greeny as well. But it, it's really kind of individual, isn't it? And it's a really cool shape. And then my good friend Mike gave me this one. And I just absolutely love that. Look at that. Look at that colour. Isn't that brilliant? It's a bit, looks a bit like a dinosaur print, doesn't it? Like a footprint of a dinosaur, that one. Then we've got one a bit more of a traditional colour, a bit more of a, of a greeny one, haven't we? You know, that's kind of what we see a lot more on the trees. And last but no means least, or leafed. Oh, come on. Yeah? That, look at that one. That's kind of gold, isn't it? And what a what a wonderful colour, isn't it, that one is, yeah? Absolutely awesome. And, and they're all really individual, they're all really different when you look at the veins in the leaves. Um, but when we see them all together as well, it paints this um, amazing picture, doesn't it, you know? When all these colours are all together, either on, on a single tree, or when we see all different trees that are, are these greens and reds, it paints an absolutely amazing picture. So on their own, they're awesome. But when they're all together, they are absolutely just as wonderful. And, and I really think that this is how God sees, sees you and how God sees me. We're all individuals and we've all got our special things. We're all wonderful and we're all amazing and we've got all our unique things. And that makes us fantastic. But when we're all together, you know, in, in church, you know, at Hope Church and in the Worldwide Church... We're amazing just the same as a real collective of people, aren't we? And, and God sees that in us. He loves our individuality, but he really loves it when we all get together. And, and next week when we're all in church, he's going to be like smiling down on us all in this building and thinking, this is fantastic. But he loves it that we gather together as well. And we're as one online like we are today. So I want you to remember, guys, that as individuals, you're amazing. Just like, just like these leaves. But when we're all together, just like the leaves on a tree or in a forest, we're all fantastic. And God absolutely loves that. And do you know why God loves that? It's because he created this and he created you. So God bless and have a leaf-tastic week. Hi, everyone. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the world that you have given us. We pray that everyone who is poorly will get better and that everyone will stay safe. We pray that everyone who can't go on holiday will still have fun at home and they will do well at school. We pray that people won't be too sad that they can't go on holiday or for some people they can't go to school um, or, do the that, or do the learning that they were supposed to learn. 
Um, so we pray that they won't be behind and we pray that they won't be too sad either. Amen. Amen. Uh, dear Lord, we pray for all those people who have suffered from mental health in this time and those people who are upset about going into tears. We just pray that they'll get better with their mental health and it'll all be okay. And we pray that lockdown will soon go away and we'll be able to meet up with our friends and have fun again. And we also pray that everyone is having fun through this half term and if, like Izzy said, they can't go on holiday, they'll feel okay at home and have fun. Amen. Amen. Bye. So we're going to sing all through history now with the able assistance of my gorgeous daughter doing the actions. Um, if you'd like to join in the actions, whether you're big or little, you're very welcome at home. We can't see you, it doesn't make any difference to us, but I think it's good fun to do, to, isn't it not? Is it not, Becca? Here we go. Thank you, Mike and team. Hi, everybody. My name's Omi, and it's great to have you with us this morning. Just bear with me before I open up my Bible and stuff. Okay, so today I'm speaking from Matthew 6, verse 25 to 34, and it's all about not being anxious or worried. In fact, the first few words of this passage, Jesus says, 
Do not be anxious about your life. And what amazes me is that the word, the Bible, that we love to read and we love to look at, all these things that Jesus teaches us, that told the people over 2,000 years ago, and we fast forward to now in 2020, and they are still so relevant now. In fact, 2020, you could almost describe it as the year of a lot of worry. 2020 has been the year of a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, whether it's because of the pandemic, whether it's because of politics, whether it's because of finances. For so many reasons, we see people around us struggling. And we hear about it in the news, don't we? There's a lot of worry. There's a lot of anxiety out there. And I think many of us as Christians read scripture. The word tells us there's various areas in the, in the Bible that tell us not to worry. Yet so many of us as Christians still struggle with it all the same. And I know that I'm one of them, if I'm being completely honest. But the thing is, God knows our struggles he knows that as human beings, we are going to go through stuff that is going to make us worry. It's going to make us concerned. It's going to make us anxious. He knows the stuff that's going on in our lives where we are going to worry. But the thing is, God is constantly refining us. And I believe today that God is close. No matter what your situation, no matter what you're going through today, or at the moment, God wants to draw close to you this morning. And it says in the word that as we draw close to him, he will draw close to us. And I just want to pray about that quickly now, that as we listen to this message, as we hear what he has to say to us, that he is going to help us, that he is going to walk through us and talk to us on our journeys. So let's just pray. Oh, Father God, we just come to you this morning, and I just thank you for this opportunity to be able to talk to, you, to, to everybody about your word and, and what you say about being worried and being anxious. Lord, I pray that as we draw close to you, you will draw close to us this morning, that whatever our circumstances, whatever our situations, no matter how big, no matter how small, Lord, that you would speak to us, this, to us this morning. We thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we commit this message to you now. Amen. So first of all, like I said, I'm going to be speaking from Matthew 6, verse, verse 25, all the way through to 34. And I am going to read the passage out now. So if you've got a Bible close to you or if you've got the Bible app on your phone, then I'm just going to ask you to switch it on. Turn the book over to Matthew 6, verses 25 to 34. Let's read together. Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is it not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the valley, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. 
There's a lot in there, isn't there? There's a lot in that single passage. And I'm going to ask you an honest question. I know you're not here with me this morning, so I can't ask for a show of hands this morning. But we're believing that God is talking to each of you individually, wherever you are this morning. So I'm going to ask you, how many of you worry? How many of you worry? How many of you spend time worrying about things going on in your life right now? How many of you have worried and spent so much time worrying about stuff that's happened in the past? How many of you are worried now, right now about things that are going to happen in the future? You know what? I can honestly say I can raise my hand. I am a worrier, I'm afraid. Um, you know, I'm the kind of person that, you ask my husband, I will be busy during the day, I will have so much going on that I might not necessarily worry during the day. But as we go to bed at night, it drives James, my husband, crazy, because no matter how tired I am, I will put my head on the pillow with, obviously, an objective of going to sleep. But usually that is when my head begins to whir. That is when stuff starts to pop into my head from the day. Whether I've forgotten to do something, whether I feel like I've done the right or the wrong thing, stuff that I need to do the next day, stuff that I want to do with the kids or that I've missed with the kids or, you know, all these things. And I'm the kind of person where at night time and my head is on the pillow and I'm wanting to go to sleep, it's worrying, and it's worrying about stuff, if I'm being honest. Whereas James, my husband, he's the annoying person, where as soon as his head hits the pillow, he's off. He's gone to sleep. He's fast asleep. No matter what is going on in his head, whether he's feeling anxious or not, he will go to sleep. But he is the type of person that will wake up very early, because we all have things that sometimes we might be worried about. You see, worry isn't just a thought or a concern. Worry is when we are anxious or when we are troubled about something. When things begin to just take over your mind. You know, it can with me, even the smallest things can sometimes just consume your mind. And it's, sometimes it can be a bit silly, really. But when I read, when I was preparing this message, I read what the Greek root word was for anxiety and worry. And the Greek root word was to divide and to separate. So it represents a mental state of mind in which someone is occupied or is dwelling upon something. When something occupies your mind and it just dwells and sits in there. You see, God knows that we'll worry because he knows our cares. He knows what's going on in our life. He knows our situations. And he knows what trials and tribulations we're going through right now and what we're going to face as well. But the thing is, God doesn't want worry to overtake us. He doesn't want worry to just sit and dwell and fester and whir around in our minds so that we struggle to move on or think about what God is actually trying to do in our lives and what God is trying to say to us. He doesn't want us to spend so much time on this earth worrying. But the thing is, the enemy does. The enemy does. The enemy wants us to be distracted from what God is doing in your life. He wants us to be distracted about what God is trying to talk to you about in your life, helping you with, guiding you, strengthening you, refining you. He doesn't want any of that. And in fact, in 1 Peter verses 6 to 8, it says that as Christians, we can cast all our anxieties onto him because he cares for us. We can cast all, not just some, all of our anxieties onto him because he cares for us. No matter how big, no matter how small, whether it's to do with what's going on in the world right now with the pandemic, whether it's your health, whether it's your finances, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your kids, whether it's stuff going on at school, stuff going on at university, we can cast all 
our anxieties onto him because he cares for us. But it goes on to say that we need to be alert. We need to be watchful because the devil prowls around like a roaring lion waiting and seeking for someone to devour. You see, once we're saved, once we as Christians have chosen to believe and accept that Jesus died for us, that he rose for the de- from the dead, God gifts us with the power of the Holy Spirit who sits and dwells in us. And we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. He becomes our helper. He becomes our encourager. He becomes our s- strength. He becomes our protector. But the enemy doesn't like any of that. And just like in 1 Peter, he's always looking for our weakness, which is not very nice to think about. (laughs) I know that. But it's true. Now, thankfully, Jesus is victorious, and he reigns, and he is with us. But instead of our mind being occupied that all the Holy Spirit wants to do when he's dwelling in us, the enemy doesn't want to. He wants to steer us away from any of that. And so going back to the passage in Matthew, and as Jesus says, whether it's the latest fashion, whether, it's the, whether you're worried about getting food on the table, whether it's what's happening in the world right now, whether it's your health, whether it's your finances, whatever is happening, he'll do everything to try and distract you from what God is doing. But God, remember, says we can cast all our anxieties onto him because he cares for us. God knows that we're, going to be, uh, that we're going to suffer or be tempted by worry. In fact, in the Amplified Version of my Bible, it titles this passage, The Cures for Anxiety and Worry. You see, in this passage, Jesus is giving us the cure How can it be so simple, you think? How can it be so simple? But this is the time to pay attention. Because if we truly believe in Jesus and what he's done for us and what he came to do for us, and if we believe in the word, then this is all truth. This is all truth for us. This is a time that now, yes, we can be caught up with so much worry and stuff going on. But God said, do not be anxious for a reason. He's told us, don't be anxious for a reason. Jesus uses the comparison of the birds in the passage, doesn't he? In fact, in the message version, it says, um, he says, look at the birds. They are careless in the care of God. And you, you count far more to him than the birds. When I was reading that, it made me think, God, wouldn't it be amazing to be a bird in the sky? Thinking about it, thinking, gosh, they really are carefree, really, aren't they? They don't have to worry about finances or necessarily health or what's happening with the pandemic. You know, it doesn't really matter to them. They have so much freedom. They have a bird's eye view on us. They don't need to worry about it. They're not tied down by a job description or anything like that. They're quite simply, as the message version says, careless in the care of God. And as I read that, it reminded me of the passage in Isaiah 40, where it speaks about the Lord and how he never gets tired and he never gets weary. And it says that when we feel tired... When we feel weary, when we feel anxious, when we feel worried, we can choose to trust and hope in the Lord because he is the one that renews our strength. He is the one that will let us run and not grow weary. He will help us walk and not be faint. It's such a powerful, powerful piece of scripture in there. But it's true, isn't it? Because the birds soar. They don't worry about food. They move when they need to move. They adjust when they need to to adjust. And they survive because God provides. But God provides for us too because it says God wants us to be careless in the care of God because he cares so much more for us 
than the birds. He wants to see us soar. He wants to see us adjust with what he's doing in our lives. And maybe we don't need to physically move or maneuver, but maybe our minds need maneuvering. Maybe we just need to think a little bit differently. And actually, when it comes to worry, I do think that this has a bit of a part to play with it. You know, do our minds allow, we let the worry creep in? We let the worry come and sit and just dwell in our minds. We let it just come and simply rest and stay and take a seat in our minds. I heard a really good analogy around this, and I want to share it with you. So it said, think of your minds as a door to a house, the house being your body. And it's common practice for people to ring the door before they come to the house. So if they come to your house, most people will ring the door, they'll knock on the door, and they'll wait for you to answer. And if you want to invite them in, you will invite them in and perhaps give them a seat, grab them a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or whatever. So when we recognize them, they are welcome in, they're invited to stay. A stranger, however, shouldn't just open the door, let themselves in, sit down, take a seat, have a cup of tea, have a cup of coffee, without your approval. And in the same vein, we shouldn't allow every thought to just come in and sit in our mind, should we? We need to actually decide what thoughts are invited to stay and what thoughts need to make a swift, sharp exit. What thoughts are just not good for us? They're not helping us. They're not progressing us. They're not speaking to us as God is speaking to us. They are uninvited thoughts. They're negative thoughts. Further along in the passage in verse 32, Jesus says that actually the Gentiles, these were the unbelievers. Um, He said, you know, actually they're the ones that can worry about things. They're the ones that can worry. But we as Christians, we shouldn't really need to worry. As believers of God, he's asking us to trust him. Jesus teaches us that worry and anxiety is for the unbelievers, really. But actually, as Christians, we can relax and know that the truth is all, yes, we're going to worry. But, you know, let's be honest, the Lord tells us we are going to worry. Nothing's going to stop that. But he says we can cast all our anxieties onto him. In this world, we get so caught up with stuff. Maybe we want more stuff. Maybe we're comparing stuff. Maybe we're filling our minds with stuff that we've got to do. Stuff that's happening around us that quite often is not even in our control anyway. And it can fill us with a lot of worry and fear. But Jesus says in this passage as well, don't worry about missing out. God knows exactly what you need. He tells us, He knows exactly what we need and he will give it to us. Now that is very different to what we might want. There might be stuff that you are praying for right now that you want to happen and it is not happening. Sometimes maybe it's an opportunity to take it back to God and trust him and surrender that situation to him because he knows, he knows what you need. But then it says, he goes on to say, just after that, he goes on to say, but first, before any of that, although he knows what you need and he will provide it for you, we don't need to be anxious, we don't need to be worried. But he does go on to say, but first, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. I think this is so important. When I read this, again, I've read this passage a number of times, but I felt like when I was studying for it, for this message, it was a bit of a revelation moment, because actually we can become so consumed with the world around us. And instead of stepping into God reality, we end up becoming fixated on newspaper reality, the BBC News reality, Sky News reality, what's happening in the world of politics reality, social media reality, what other people are saying, job reality, what's happening at work. 
And by doing this, we're compounding our minds even more. You know, you've got enough worry going on. You've got enough stuff going on in your life. And then we become more and more and more fixated and compounded with all of that going on. And more often than not, a lot of it we can't even control. Yet we allow it to just come and sit and whir around and around and around in our minds. Actually, Jesus is saying, if we allowed our decisions and our thoughts and our minds to be based on the word of God, wisdom from God, then we wouldn't be so preoccupied with getting what we want and being so concerned and worried over all these things. When Jesus asks us to seek his kingdom and his righteousness first, he's asking us, He's inviting us to seek the one who represents the kingdom. Jesus represents the kingdom. And all the values that he embodies, he wants us to seek that. He wants us to press forward in that. Righteousness, peace, love, humility, self-control. Jesus represents the kingdom. But we all belong. We are all a part of that. He's asking us to seek his righteousness above everything else, which is his way of doing things. We are ambassadors in this world of Christ. And he, he's asking us to put his word into practice. In Philippians, there's a very well-known scripture in there. And it says, rejoice in the Lord always. Let your gentle spirit, which is your graciousness, your unselfishness, your mercy, your patience, your love, let it all be known to all people. He wants us to seek his righteousness. He wants us to display his splendor. He wants us to be an ambassador of God more than anything. And then he says, the Lord is near. And he says again, do not be anxious or worried about anything. But in every circumstance, in every situation, by prayer and petition, make your specific request to God. Because he's listening. He knows and he cares. Shape your worries into prayers. Choose what comes in on what needs to be cast back out to Jesus. At the end of the passage in Matthew, he says, therefore, and it's really interesting, so he starts the passage off with don't be anxious, and he ends it with don't be anxious. Listen to this. He says, therefore, don't be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow has enough anxiety of its own. God knows your situation. God knows exactly what's whirring in your mind. He knows exactly what is happening in your life right now. And as crazy as that is to think, and sometimes we can't believe it, we can't understand it, it's the truth. We can let worry take over. We can let worry have an uninvited seat in our mind for far too long. And we spend too much time focusing on the problem. Focusing on all of that and forgetting and not letting God in. Because there's not enough room for him to speak. We're not making enough space for him. It's such simple teaching, isn't it? It's such simple teaching. But I just pray today. And I'm just going to ask you today. That we give our attention to God. That we choose to listen to what he is doing in our lives right now. That we pay attention. That we spend time not worrying so much about the problems. And thinking about what we're letting into our mind. And what we're casting back out to Jesus. He wants to take away. He wants to, he wants to help you. He wants to walk with you. He wants to journey with you. 
Today, choose to believe and trust that God's in control. He's bigger than everything and anything. And something else I just want to share just as we close, because I just think that this is really important as well. We've learned today that we know that we can cast our anxieties to Jesus. Jesus wants to take that. He wants to build a relationship with us. He wants to take them from you, and he wants to walk with you on this journey. But I also know in Scripture it does talk about, Jesus talks about sharing with friends. And I think it's really important at this moment in time that if you have stuff going on in your life, and you haven't shared with anybody, and you are dealing with something all on your own, and you are finding it really, really difficult, then I urge you to find a friend, find a partner, find somebody in your life that has wisdom, Christian wisdom, that is a solid Christian. It could be somebody from church. It could be somebody close to you. It could be a relative, a friend. It doesn't matter, but somebody that you can really trust that will walk your journey with you, that will pray with you, will, that will help you shape those worries into prayers and pray to the Lord. Thank you so much for listening this morning. I hope it's blessed you. And now I'm just going to hand over to the worship team. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. That, that was fantastic. Uh, so we're going to sing Goodness of God now. And um, one of the great ways of um, being less anxious about things is remembering God's goodness in our life and all the wonderful things that he's done. Um, as we come back to what Amy was saying about rejoicing in him and giving thanks as a great antidote to being worried about stuff. So, uh, so let's sing uh, Goodness of God together.
Thank you so much for that band. That was an amazing worship. And thank you also to Amy for such an amazing word today that I think, you know, really does make us all think. And I just wanted to, to add to that. Um, this week, a friend had sent me a beautiful picture with some words on. And the word said, cast off the burdens of the world and let me lead you back to wonder. And it just made me think about when I was listening to Amy about, have we let the anxieties and the worries stop us from actually enjoying all that God's got in store for us. And you know what? Sometimes obstacles can get in the way, but don't let that stop you from enjoying the wonder that God's got in store for you. Um, I'm just going to give you some notices now and just to share that we're so excited that next week we're going to be able to meet here live in the building. Um, that it will still be on YouTube and Facebook on the live stream. So um, if you can't get a place, you can still see it. Don't worry. But you do need to book. So if you would like to come and have your spot here next Sunday, um, you can do that via church suite if you have that. If you don't have that, don't worry, you can get in church with us through admin at hopechurch.co.uk um, and you can um, request your place for that. It is limited though, so you do need to do it as soon as possible. There'll also be some children's work and so you can book your kids on through the same, same way, but I think you have to put them in through to make sure they know they're going into the children's work because that is also um, limited. But we are very excited by that, and I think I'm sure the people that are up here will love having you here. Um, so please book your slot as soon as you can so that you know you've got it. Um, right, so I just want to thank you so much for joining us this morning. We hope you've enjoyed it. We hope you've been as blessed as we have. And I'm just going to say, Lord, um, I just pray that you would bless everybody that's listened this morning, that they would um, learn that... You don't want us to worry. That's something that comes from the enemy, Lord. That is not from you. And I just pray that this week we would cast all our cares upon you, Lord. Thank you that you are big enough and strong enough to hold all of them. Um, so we ask this in your name. Amen. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today for today's gathering. I hope you found it really, really helpful. If you were affected by anything that came up in today's service, then please just email us. It's prayer at hopechurchwigston.co.uk and someone will get back to you. If you enjoyed the service, then uh, why not subscribe to our YouTube channel um, or follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, 
why not share this video, this service on your social media pages so all your friends can watch as well. And we can't wait to be back together um, for our normal gatherings in person. But until then, we will be here every Sunday at 10.30 and we hope to see you again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.